بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وعظيمنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الغر الميامين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيدي ومولاي علي بن أبي طالب الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أما بعد يقول الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد أخذ الله ميثاق بني إسرائيل وبعثنا منهم اثني عشر نقيبا The first of our salawat in honor of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam The second in honor of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib The third with your loudest voices in honor of the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al-Asri wa al-Zaman Respected scholars, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Why 12 Imams? And why is the Mahdi the 12th Imam? Is a central question within Islamic theology. Indeed, on many occasions, the Imamis are asked this question. That we believe in the Mahdi, but why is he necessarily the 12th? As in, can't it be a case that the Mahdi will be born at the end of time like everybody else will be, and that he will bring justice on the earth and remove all tyranny? Indeed, you find a central pillar in the beliefs of the Shia Imamis is that there are 12 successors of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The 12th of these successors is known as the Mahdi. But this, of course, is not the case for all the Muslims in the world today. While the majority of Muslims believe in the Mahdi, you'll find, for example, our brothers from Ahl Sunnah believe in the Mahdi, but believe that he is not born yet, that he will be born at the end of time, in contrast to our belief that he is already born. Indeed, to them, they say that, yes, we can all agree that the Mahdi was spoken of by the Holy Prophet, yes, that there were over 26 companions who have narrated traditions that the Mahdi will be from my descendants, that the religion will continue until the final hour, and that you will find that the Mahdi will emerge, remove all tyranny, and bring about justice. But they say, why is it that you insist that he is the 12th of the successors? Can the Mahdi not just simply be a mujaddid, the Mahdi, can he just not simply be a reformer, a great Muslim at the end of time, who seeks to reform that which surrounds him in terms of tyranny and oppression, and instill justice in the world? Indeed, you therefore find that there are many who ask this question about why we believe not in the Mahdi. No, everyone agrees with us about believing in the Mahdi. Rather, why is he the 12th? As in, why did we have to say that there are 12 successes of the Prophet? You'll find, for example, the Zaydis will turn around and say, the Zaydis in Yemen today, they'll turn around and they say, listen, we believe up until Imam Zain al-Abideen. And then after Imam Zain al-Abideen, we go to Zayd, not Imam al-Baqir. Yes? So they may have their own conception of the awaited Savior who will rise against tyranny. The Ismailis, whether they are known as the Nizaris or the Buhra, their conception, they will have their own conception of who the Mahdi is, yes? Likewise, you will find that there have been many who have emerged who are known as Mahdis. And that's why all of these groups cannot understand why we say he is number 12. 
There are some who believed Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, Imam Ali's son from Khawla ibn Ja'far. He was the brother of Hassan and Hussein from a different mother. Some said he was the Mahdi. Others said the Mahdi was Muhammad Nafs al Zakiya. Others said the Mahdi was Imam al Kadhim. Others said the Mahdi was Imam al Askari. You therefore find in history, many have come forward and said, listen, we agree with you about the belief in the Mahdi. Yes? But why is it that you believe that your belief in him being the 12th is the correct belief? Yes? As in, why can you not accept that Imam Musa al-Kadhim was the Mahdi? Or Imam al-Sadiq was the Mahdi? Or Muhammad Nafs al-Zakiya was the Mahdi? Or Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya was the Mahdi? Or Ismail, son of Imam al-Sadiq, went into Ghaybah and was the Mahdi. Yes? And this raises a central question. Why was there even so many Mahdis? If Rasulullah had made it so clear that there are 12 Imams after him and he had named them one by one, why did the Ismailis become Ismailis? Why did the Buhra become Buhra? And why did the Zaydis become Zaydis? And why did, for example, our brothers in Ahlul Sunnah, why did they not take these Imams? I guarantee you, if you ask many of the Ifna Ashari's in the world today, where are the names of your 12 Imams written? Yes, since childhood, you've been told to believe in the 12 Imams. Yes? Ask 90% of the Shia in the world, Ifna Ashari's, to show you where is the names that your Prophet said, after me will be Ali, then Hassan, then Hussein, then Ali ibn al Hussein, Muhammad bin Ali, Ja'far ibn Muhammad, Musa ibn Ja'far, Ali ibn Musa, Muhammad bin Ali, Ali ibn Muhammad, Al Hassan bin Ali, and Al Hujjah. Someone will turn around and say, Where is this written? Yes, otherwise, why would the Ismaili become Ismaili? If Ismaili is living at the time, yes, he knows Imam al Sadiq is alive. And if he really has documents that show that after Imam al Sadiq, there is Imam al Kadhim, yes, why would he take Ismail? As in if these documents are with him. You imagine, we always claim that in the time of Rasulullah, everyone knew who the Imams were. Doesn't look like it. Why would the Ismaili become Ismaili? Why would the Zaydi, why would he take Imam Zayn al Abidi, Imam al Baqar, not ahead of Zayd? Yes. Why take a step further? When Imam al Askari died, why was there many Shia groups who believed he was the Mahdi? See. The majority of the Shia, if you ask them these questions, will not know how to answer. That I can guarantee you, yes? Take it from me. The majority will not know how to answer. Many will grow up and they're told, listen, you have to believe in Allah, the prophets, and the imams. As if it's so clear. Nothing else is clearer. Relax, yes? There are many who think that it's so clear and there'll be no confusion. But how is there no confusion? Within the Shia, you have Ithna Asharis, Ismailis, Buhra, Zaydis, and so on. Outside of the Shia, there are many who are alive who say, listen, I've read in your own hadith books that someone like Zorara did not know who the Imam is after Imam al sadiq Yes? Or that there are companions of the 10th Imam, 11th Imam, don't know who the next Imam is. How is this the case? If the Imams had made clear who the Imams were after them, how is it the case that there is confusion? About one Imam after the other. This led many Shia who were born Shia to leave Shiism. Today is a period of confusion. Why? Because you have today many who ask this question. That if these 12 Imams were so clear as we make it to see him. Then why are there other Shia groups? Why would these Shia groups take Ismail? If Imam al-Sadiq came out, gave a lecture... In public, in front of everyone, and Imam al Sadiq said, After me is Imam Musa al Kadhim. Yes? Then everyone would know that Imam Musa al Kadhim. Let's follow Imam Musa al Kadhim. Why would people follow Ismail? Why would others follow Abdul? Why would some think Imam Musa al Kadhim is the Mahdi? If the Prophet said the 12th is the Mahdi, why do some people think Imam Musa al Kadhim is the Mahdi? Yes? These are the difficult questions to answer. Yes? It's not easy just to answer these questions. And believe you me, there are people out there, if you enter a debate with them, yes? A debate with them, they'll destroy you on these things, yes? Because they know Al-Kafi inside out. And they know Man La Yahdarahu Al-Faqih. 
They know, for example, Kitab al-Tahdib, Kitab al-Istibsar, Wasail al-Shia, Al-Mustadrak ala al-Wasail. They know al-Wafi, they know Bihar inside out, yes? If you don't know your literature, this is a very difficult area to explain. Because many turn around to us and say, listen, if the Prophet made it so clear that there are 12 Imams after him, why does the majority of the Muslim world not even know about this or believe in it? Yes? You go to many of our brothers in Al-Sunnah, many of them say, why do we have to follow 12 Imams? Where did the Prophet ever in his life say, you have to follow 12 Imams? Where's the evidence? Where is there even an evidence that the Prophets before Rasulullah had 12 successes? Yes? Forget the Holy Prophet. Did Musa have 12? Did Isa have 12? Someone turns around and says, did Ibrahim ever mention 12? Because if we believe that the 12th Imam is for the whole of mankind, yes, Christians, Jews, everyone can join him, surely in their literature, that conception of the number 12 will be there. And this is a central issue which many could not answer because when I've asked people before, I say to them, excuse me, you believe in 12 Imams? I said, yes. So you believe in 12? I said, yes, yes, I do. Where, where is it written? Where? I never saw their names in Quran. Did you see their names in Quran? No. In Hadith, where is it written? You have to believe in 12 Imams. Al-Kafi, someone says to me. Yes? Al-Kafi was written after the 12 Imams. Anyone can write backwards. Where after? Yes? Someone says, Wasail al-Shia. Years after the 12 Imams it was written. Someone says, Bihar al -Anwa. Years after the 12 Imams it was written. Anyone can come after the 12 Imams have lived. Anyone can come and say, well, you know what? I want to put my list of 12. Yes? I want to put Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hassan, Hussein, Sajjad, Baqar, Sadiq, Kadhim. Someone else can say, okay, I want to put Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hassan, Hussein, Sajjad, Baqar, Sadiq, Ismail. Where is it written that you have to follow 12 Imams? You see, unless someone's aqaid are strong, the first time someone asks them these questions, they start getting confused, yes? And without a doubt, one of the most confusing areas for any of the Shia, yes, is about understanding that the 12th Imam, not that he lives, but why is he 12 out of 12, yes? It's a very difficult area, it's not easy to understand. Because do you agree with me, Imam Musa al-Kadhim was in prison for many years, do you agree? Imam al-Had, Imam al-Askari were in house arrest for many years. Do you agree? So you weren't giving lectures publicly, were you? You think Imam Musa al-Kadhim was giving majalis publicly after me is Musa al-Kadhim, after me Imam al-Rada, after me Imam al-Jawad. It couldn't be public because they were under immense pressure. They were under immense difficulty. In other words, this central issue, even sixth Imam has a dua. Sixth Imam tells his companion the period of understanding the 12th Imam will be so confusing that recite the following dua Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabit Qalbi ala Deenik. Many of us have recited this dua in Qunut, correct? Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabit Qalbi ala Deenik. Oh Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, you who rotates the hearts, cement my heart on your religion. Why? Because when someone throws these things, especially today on the internet, yes? On the internet, everyone's become Ayatollah Google, Ayatollah Wikipedia. Everybody has become a marja on the internet, yes? The one who can't write his name in Arabic is now teaching me about Arabic, yes? MashaAllah. Everyone is coming on the internet now. This person who's never studied one book has now become marja, yes? And this person who's never ever in his life memorized any of the surahs of the Quran, he is now telling me about the Quran. Yes? Therefore, you find this central question is a vital one. From outside our school, people say, why should we believe in the 12 Imams? From within our school, people say, well, if we know the 12 Imams were so clear, why is there Ismaili and Buhra and Zaidi? If it was really that clear, why are there so many different offshoots of the truth? Let's try and examine it tonight, inshallah. In order that we're able to understand the basis of the 12th Imams and the 12th Imam in particular. Yes? So that when someone asks you, prove to me your belief in the 12th Imams, you don't come back with a basic six-year-old answer. Yes? That, oh, everybody knew there's a 12th Imams. But rather you come back with an answer 
which is full of academic proofs as well as traditional discussions. I'd like to examine this in the following stages. Number one, when Allah appointed chieftains and successors for Musa, how many of them does the ayah mention he appointed? And what was their role in this world? Number two, when Abdullah bin Mas'ud was asked about these 12, what did he say Rasulullah said about the 12 successors after him? Number three, are the 12 successors or the concept of 12 emirs or 12 khalifs, is it in Sunni literature or no? If it is, where is it? Number four, why didn't Rasulullah write the names of the 12 imams? Wouldn't have this made everything so much easier for us or no? Number five, why was there a rejection or a lack of knowledge from imam to imam's followers? And why did some of them not reveal their knowledge of who the imam was after them? Number six, do we have any books from the times of the imams that mention the imams' names? And if we do, what are these books and how are they proof that the 12th imam concept was not after the 12 imams, but even during their life? Let me examine this in order that I dissect this topic in complete depth. Someone asked the question, the prophets previous to Rasulullah, did they have successes? As in, did they have wasis? Did they have khulafa after them? Of course. Why? Because logically speaking, when a revelation comes to a prophet of God, the prophet's role with that revelation is what? The prophet's role with that revelation is to protect the revelation. Yes? When Nabi Musa alayhi salam receives wahi, receives revelation, when Nabi Musa receives this revelation, his role is what? His role is to teach that revelation and make sure that it's given to his nation. Yes? When the ayahs of the Torah come to Musa, Nabi Musa alayhi salam has a certain limited amount of time to explain the Torah to his people. Yes? So when the Torah comes to Musa, his role is simply what? He is the protector of the wahi. Yes? The wahi comes, he disseminates the wahi. Yaklu alayhim ayatihi. Yes? Yu'allimuhum al-kitab wal-hikmah. And in the due process, you zakki him. The ayahs come of the Torah. He explains the ayahs to the people, reveals it to them. And then, is his mission finished or not? No. Why? Because a Nabi or a Rasul, a Rasul receives revelation. Whereas his successors protect the interpretation. Yes? When a Rasul gets a message, his role is what? His role is that when the wahi comes to him, he disseminates the wahi to the people. But he's only got a limited time to explain what has come from the heavens. No prophet can leave this world without having a khalifa to look after the interpretation of his message. Yes? The role of the Khalifa is what? When you say an Imam and a Rasul, Rasul brings the Wahi to man. An Imam protects the Wahi from Tahrif. Yes? An Imam protects the Tafsir and the Ta'wil, the interpretation of the message from going in the wrong hands. Yes? Therefore, when we come to the Prophets, did Allah ever mention a Prophet in the Quran? who Allah appointed and he gave him 12 successors. Why? Because today someone says to me, how do I know after a prophet there isn't four imams, seven imams, 49 imams, yes? Or no imams. I say, look in the Quran, Surah 5, verse 12. In Surah 5, verse 12, Allah talks about 12. In which way? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ Yes? Bani Israel. Allah took a covenant from the children of Israel. Yes? What was the covenant Allah took from the children of Israel? وَبَعَثْنَا مِنْهُمُ اثْنَيْ عَشَرَ نَقِيمًا And we made 
what we made 12 successes to look after this covenant. Ithnay Ashar. What are we called? Ithnay Ashar. Do you agree? Nabi Musa alayhi salam, Allah took a covenant with the children of Israel. Yes? وَلَقَدْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَبَعَثْنَا مِنْهُمُ اثْنَيْ عَشَرَ نَقِيبًا Allah took a covenant with the children of Israel. What's the covenant? The covenant with the children of Israel. You look after the message of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. You protect Nabi Musa. You follow Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Nabi Musa is my prophet on this earth. And Nabi Musa is the messenger you have to follow in all your areas. He is the prime example. But did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave Musa with his message and that's all? No. He says that we made 12 successes for Musa. Yes. In other words, the conception of 12 successes for a prophet of God did not begin with Rasulullah. No. It began with Nabi Musa alayhi salam. When Allah said, وَلَقَدْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَبَعَثْنَا مِنْهُمُ اثْنَيْ عَشَرَ نَقِيبًا We made a covenant with the children of Israel that they follow Nabi Musa alayhi salam. And from them, we made 12 naqibs. Yes? Means what? Means Nabi Musa had 12 chiefs. Firstly, did Musa appoint these 12? No. A prophet can never appoint his successors. They can only be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? Never do you find in the history of mankind that any of Allah's guides on earth were appointed by the people. Never. Yes? Always. Nabi Adam, inni ja'alun fil ardi khalifa. I am sending Adam as a khalifa on the earth. Nabi Ibrahim, inni ja'iluka lil nasi imama. I am making you an imam on the earth. Nabi Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ardh. We have made you khalifa on this earth. Even Talut, when he was made king of the children of Israel, when David fought Goliath, yes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna Allah astafah alaykum in surah al-Baqarah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاهَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah has chosen Talut for you. Talut was a king. Yes? Even the king of a nation, Allah chooses. Why? Because in Surah 28, verse 68, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes something very clear. I choose who I want to. Yes? The choosing is never with you. رَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاء وَيَخْتَارُ مَا كَانَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَ Yes? Your Lord creates what he wants and he chooses who he wants. Never will the choosing be with them. Why? If Bani Israel chose who succeeds Musa, what are they going to do? They're going to give it to their best friends. They're going to give it to who looks after them. They're not going to give it to the rightful people. Allah knows his creation better than they know themselves. Yes? Therefore, you found that these successes, what was their role? Their role was not that they were bringing a new message. They were protecting the message of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Yes? How many of them were protecting Nabi Musa's message? Four of them, the Quran says. Seven of them. Nine of them. Quran says, وَبَعَثْنَا مِنْهُمُ اثْنَيْ عَشَرَ نَقِيبًا Yes? From the very beginning, the Bani Israel, the number 12 was fundamental for them. Yes? In Genesis, if you read Genesis, chapter 17, verse 17, God says in chapter 17, verse 17 of Genesis, we will give Abraham's sons a great nation. There will be Ismail's sons will be given a great nation. There will be 12 princes from the line of Ismail, alayhi salam. How many? 12 or 51? 63? 4? Seven. In the Bible today, Genesis says there will be 12 princes from the line of Ismail. Someone says, but Sayyid Ammar, that doesn't mean that they're imams. Doesn't matter. The number 12 still applies over there. Yes? Nabi Ismail, God says in Genesis, don't come to Quran. Go to Genesis. Because the Mahdi is for all of mankind. Yes? And the Mahdi is from the children of Ismail. Yes? Don't bring me someone who doesn't know who his dad is 
and someone who doesn't know who his mom is. Bring me people of pure birth, yes? Genesis, you have what? Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Nabi Ibrahim, Allah promises Ismail there will be 12 princes from your line. In the Quran, Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 12, وَبَعَثْنَا مِنْهُمُ اثْنَيْ عَشَرَ Naqiba. Someone says, oh look, your concept of Imam has taken from the Jews. Yes? No. It is the sunnah of Allah to keep Imam in the line of Ibrahim. Yes? That's all. That's all. You keep telling us why. Doesn't the Quran say, أَمْ يَحْسُدُونَ Yes? They are envious of Al Ibrahim because we gave them Nubuwa. The same envy applies for Imam, sadly. Yes? Allah chose 12. Genesis chapter 17, verse 17. There will be 12 princes from the line of Ismail. Then in the Quran, Allah says, there will be 12 chiefs for Nabi Musa, alayhi salam. Yes? Later you find Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal narrates this from Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Yes? Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, I heard Rasulullah say, the number of successes after me are the same as the number of naqibs of Nabi Musa, alayhi salam. Yes? Where is it? Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal. Yes? Ahmed bin Hanbal was living in the time after 12th Imam or during Imam al Rida. <laughs> Ahmed bin Hanbal is living in the time of Imam al Rida. If he lived after 12th Imam, someone says he could make it up. Yes? Ahmed bin Hanbal in the time of Imam al Rida. He said what? Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, Rasulullah said, the number of Khulafa after me will be the same as the Naqibs of Bani Israel. Yes? In Surah 5 verse 12, because someone might come and say, what is this you believe in 12 Imams? Say, Quran is telling me Nabi Musa had 12. Yes? Likewise, you find that Abdullah bin Mas'ud narrates, he says that it was very clear for all of us that the Holy Prophet had said, there will be 12 Khulafa after me like the 12th Nuqaba of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Yes? Therefore, you found on the first level, the Qur'an had made what clear? The Qur'an had made something very clear. And that was that the prophets who have come before Muhammad, the sunnah in them was that they have 12 khulafa after them. Yes? Nabi Musa had 12. Nabi Isa had 12. Yes? You go even to the Christians today, you ask them, how many disciples did Christ have? Yes? Likewise, our holy prophet. Someone says, but look, that maybe is only in our books. Firstly, we said Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal. Yes. Imam Abu Hanifa lived with Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq. Imam Malik lived with Imam al-Sadiq. Imam al-Shafi'i lived in the time of Imam Musa al-Kadhim. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal lived in the time of Imam al rada In other words, in the time of the Imams, there was a conception of the number 12. Yes. It wasn't just a myth that came after and after. In the time of the Imams, they were writing in their books of Hadith that what? That there will be 12. Someone says in all of the Sunni literature, did Rasulullah say there will be 12? You find in the books of our Sunni brothers, there are numerous Hadiths where Rasulullah made clear, after me there will be 12. Yes? Where? Someone asks where? Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih Muslim, you'll find it as well in Musnad Ahmed bin Hanbal. You'll find it as well, where else? Within Tirmidhi, Al-Tabarani, all of these books of Al-Sunnah. Someone says, well, if they're in the books of Ahl sunnah why is it that they don't know? Firstly, something which is very important, many Shia don't read their own books. You think you should blame Ahl sunnah <laughs> You ask a Shia, what's your main book? He says, Najil Balagha. What are you talking about? So how about Al-Kafi, Man La Yahdarahu Al-Faqih, Kitab Al-Tahdib, Al-Istabsar, Wasail Al-Shia. All of these works, Basar Al-Darajat, Al-Mahasin, his work, Al-Mahasin of Al-Barqi, Kitab Sulaim, all of these. Shia always likes to say to others, hey, you don't read your own books. And when did you read to tell others? What are you, walking encyclopedia? <laughs> Firstly, our brothers in Ahl sunnah within Bukhari, Jabir bin Samra narrates, he said that I heard Rasulullah say that there will be 12 khulafa after me. Where? Sahih al-Bukhari. You know the beautiful thing about the world we live in today? Internet, you can search for anything, yes? 
Today, go on Google, type Sahih al-Bukhari. When the search engine comes up, when you go on the website, just type 12. See all of the hadiths come up about 12. Jabir, when someone narrates, that Rasulullah said there will be 12. Four? No. Seven? No. Nine? No. 496? No. There will be 12 Khulafa after me. Then he said, I, he said something I didn't hear. My father said, then he said, they will all be from Quraysh. Yes? Number one. In Sahih Muslim, the same Jabir bin Samra narrates, this religion, Rasulullah says, will continue until the final hour, and there will be 12 Khulafa after me. All of them from Quraysh. Yes? Sahih al-Bukhari, Rasulullah says there will be 12 after me. Sahih Muslim, Rasulullah says there will be 12 after me. Likewise, you find, Tirmidhi says what? Tirmidhi says that Rasulullah said there will be 12 emirs after me. Yes, no problem. Amir, Khalifa. Tabarani says what? Rasulullah said there will be 12 qayyims after me. Yes? Abdullah bin Mas'ud al Muslim Muhammad says what? Rasulullah said the number after me are the same as the number of Musa. Yes? In other words, within the brothers, our brothers in Ahlul Sunnah, within their literature, there will be 12 is there. Are the names in their books? No. No. There will be 12 is there. As to whether the names are in their books, someone might bring me a random piece of literature like the Yanabi' for example someone might bring them no if you ask me Bukhari Muslim are the names of the 12 written no but did Rasulullah say there will be 12 yes why aren't the names written Ya Rasulullah could you not have made it easier for us yes as in this is the central point if you had just said Ya Rasulullah written something down and we could have had it today and we send it out on email everywhere. The world will be a better place. ISIS will finish. And everyone will move on, inshallah. Yes? And there will be no doubt. Someone says, Ya Rasulullah, why? Why don't you make it clear? Rasulullah wanted to write for you. Rasulullah wanted to. Ya Rasulullah wanted to. It was the leaders of leaders who called him delirious. Yes. Karmani and Qastalani, both of them have written Sharh of Sahih al Bukhari. Yes. Sahih al Bukhari has a Sharh, an explanation, tafsir. Yes. In their tafsir of one incident, they said Rasulullah was going to write who his successors are. But because someone called him delirious. And this breaks the heart. It breaks the heart. Your prophet asks you for a pen and paper. Pen and paper. Write for me that way you will never go astray. Rasul said I will write. I remember someone saying Rasulullah doesn't know. How to read or write. He wouldn't say that. You think Rasulullah doesn't have secretaries to write for him? What's wrong with you? <laughs> when I tell you, hey, bring me, bring me a letter. I want to write something for you. I'm going to call my secretary. Write for me. I'm going to dictate to you. Yes. The Holy Prophet firstly knows how to read and write. And we don't believe that he doesn't know. But you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that he was never taught by a human how to read or write. He's taught by Allah. Rasulullah. And someone even says to me, listen, in this incident, they didn't mean to call him crazy. They just cared for him so much, they got emotional. The beginning of the hadith is the one that gives it away. And the end of the hadith. Beginning, Ibn Abbas says, Thursday. What a Thursday. I cried. He talks of how much he cried on that Thursday. Yes? That was the Thursday until today. They call it the calamity. The calamity of Thursday. A few days before Rasulullah is dying, dead, he's on his deathbed. He says to his companions, please bring me a pen and paper. I will write for you that where you will never go astray. Yes? Suddenly the hadith says the companions, one of them came 
And he said, you are delirious. The Quran is enough for us. When someone says the Quran is enough, in other words, he knows you are going to write names of people next to the Quran. Karamani and Qastalani say, Rasul wanted to write who his successors are. Someone turns around and says, why would he need to write if he's already made an announcement? No, you keep asserting and making the world certain of the names of your successors so no one comes back. That person said, you are delirious. The Quran is enough for us. Someone says, but he never meant it in a bad way. He, he saw Rasulullah was ill, he felt bad. Why did the companions fight then? When we go to hospital, I see someone is on his deathbed. Yes? First, if that person tells me, can you give me something I want to write? I will never call them crazy. The first thing I'll do is bring something quickly. Secondly, if I even tell them that, listen, maybe you're a bit ill, it's not going to cause a fight, will it? Unless the way you spoke to Rasulullah made some companions angry. Yes? And this is where, in Bukhari and Muslim, that he said to Rasulullah, you are crazy, delirious. The Quran is enough. When someone says the Quran is enough, who are you to tell Rasulullah what's enough? Yes? Who are you? On a side note, I remember someone once coming to me, he said to me, so and so and so and so, Rasulullah made so and so lead namaz at the end. Yes? He said, so that means that so and so is the successor of Rasulullah because he led salah at the end. You know what I said? The Prophet must have been delirious when he appointed him. <laughs> he said, how dare you say that? I said, when you all said that about Rasulullah, that's akhlaq. So now every time you tell me something else, I'll say the Prophet was delirious when he said that. Yes? How dare you say Rasulullah was delirious? Rasul wanted to write for the whole Ummah. The Ummah rejected. Yes? Had Rasulullah been given that pen and paper on that day, it would have still been made clear. And I guarantee you, even if Rasulullah wrote that, even if he did, they'd still fight his Al Muhammad, yes? They would still fight. They would still try and kill them. They'd still try and massacre them, yes? Therefore, those who came and said, is the 12th mentioned? Yes. Are their names mentioned in the books of Ahlul Sunnah? No, they're not mentioned. What do then the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah say about the 12th? If I'm an alim and I see Bukhari says 12, Muslim says 12, I can't just leave the hadith. Can I? Imagine tomorrow I go, tomorrow I go to a mosque of our brothers. I said, excuse me, do you agree with Bukhari? He says, yes. I said, when Bukhari says there are 12 after me, no problem. Who are your 12? I know my 12. And I belong to the only school on earth that can name them. Nobody else. I said, but you tell me you're 12. Because when you give me a hadith about Rasulullah eating garlic, you give me tafsir 600 pages. You give me a hadith about Rasulullah riding a donkey, you give me 65 volumes about how to ride a donkey. Yes? Give me a had give me explanation of 12 khulafa after me. Let's see the explanations. Suyuti has the book Tariq al Khulafa, famous scholar. He says, I can name 10. Habib Rasulullah said 12. He said, I can only think of 10 who are worthy. More 1,000 years since Saqifa, you can only name 10. 1,000 years since Saqifa, you can only name me 10. Umayyad, Abbasid, Fatimid, Seljuk, Mamluk, Ayyubids, Ottomans, one after the other, Ilkanids, ten only? Who are your ten? Let's go ahead. Says Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, Ali, Hassan. Yes? 
Muawiyah, Hasan and Muawiyah. Yes. This, this is, my dear brothers and sisters, this is knowledge. I, we shouldn't be smiling about these things because this is knowledge. I'm, I don't mean this in a disrespect to any other school in Islam. This is academic discussion on member of the Bayt, the akhlaq has to be the highest. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Hassan, Muawiyah, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Al Mahdi al Abbasi, and Tahir Abbasi. Only those ten? Yes. Where's Marwan? When you say his name, you say, Radi Allah, and why isn't he made the ten? Unless you have a problem with him, but your heart doesn't let you say. Yes. And I can name others and others who. Suyuti said, How many? Ten. I said, Suyuti, how about the other two? He says, Maybe at the end they will come. Okay. Nawawi in his sharh, he says, I can't name the twelve because we don't know when the greatest Islamic empire will be. Maybe they will all come at the end. Rasul is saying they will all come at the end, or he's saying, After me, there are twelve. Ibn Kuthir. When he talks about the 12, he says every single one until Walid bin Abdul Malik from Rasulullah. Yazid, Muawiyah, include everyone. The killer of the grandson of Rasulullah is also good Khalifa after Rasulullah. Yes? Yes? You have, for example, the others. Ibn Arabi in his analysis, what does he say? He mentions the names. He says Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Hassan, Muawiyah. Then he mentions people like Umar bin Abdul Aziz, Marwan bin al Hakam, Marwan al Hamar, al Safah. You say all of you cannot agree on 12 people? Just 12. Mu Rasulullah said there'll be 12 after me. You can't agree on them? One of you tells me Yazid is in there. The other one says, sorry, Yazid, no space for you in there. The other one says, Marwan is in The other one says, no space for Marwan today. What is this graduation ceremony for a university application? It shouldn't be that difficult. Twelve names, it should be easy for a person with the twelve. When you came to Al Muhammad, the twelve were there for us. Someone asks, and this is a vital question. Our brothers in the Sunnah, they're not sure about the twelve. Were we necessarily sure about the twelfth? It's an important question. Why? Because there were times during those twelve. Yes, there were times. Where even the Shia of those Imams didn't know who the Imam was after. There are reports Zorara didn't know who the Imam is after Imam al-Sadiq. There are reports many of the Shia in time of Imam al-Askari didn't know if 12th Imam is there, not there. Some followed Imam al-Askari. Some said Imam al-Askari went into Ghaybah, there's no 12th Imam. Therefore, someone asked the question, can I blame the Buhra and the Ismaili and the Zaydi for believing in theirs. Firstly, everyone has their own research and we respect every school in Islam. At the end of the day, everyone has their own day of judgment. What we know is number one, Rasul said there will be 12. Do you agree? So in other words, from the outset, the Prophet said 12. Number two, what are the factors that may be meant not everyone at that moment knew who the next Imam is. The first factor, taqiyah. You think it's easy living under a government that wants to kill each member of Al Muhammad for Al Muhammad to just trust anyone? Al Muhammad have been stabbed in the back by their own nephews. Imam Musa al Kadam was killed because his nephew went to Harun al Rashid spying on Imam Musa al Kadam. You know what taqiyah is? Hiding your faith in a time of life and death. You don't think people like Abu Basir, Zorara, Muhammad ibn Muslim, Mu'min al-Taq, Mu'alla ibn Khunais, people like Da'bal ibn Ali al-Khuzai, the poets from the Hamadanis. You don't think people like this were hiding a lot of their faith because they were about to be killed? You know how many of these Abbasid Khulafa massacred followers of Al-Muhammad? They would take them in the middle of town and behead them one by one. There is an incident all of you should do your research on on the internet. Waqi'at al-Fakh. Imam al-Rada says, if it wasn't for Karbala, 
the worst incident in our history is the history of is the incident of Fakh. They massacred the grandchildren of Fatima al Zahra one after the other. The Imams, number one, do not tell everyone around them who the next Imam is, except the chosen ones of them. Yes? Because even the one next to you, who may, you may think is loyal, he himself may tell the wrong person. He himself may stab you in the back. In other words, the same thing the previous prophets did, the Imams did. Nabi Ammar bin Yasir, when Abu Jahl was torturing him, Ammar said, I don't believe in Allah. Rasulullah saw Ammar. Ammar was crying, Ya Rasulullah, I believe in Allah. But the only reason I said I don't believe in Allah was because I was being tortured. The Quran said, do not worry. We know what's in your heart. Yes? Taqiyya. Concealing one's faith at a time of danger, life or death. Many of the companions of the Imams, the chosen ones, closest to the Imams, either knew who the next imam is but would not openly reveal or were not told there and then yes they would go and search until eventually they would be told who the imam is in the irshad we see abu basir and zurara in mufid's irshad going to look who the next imam is does that mean that imam al-sadiq couldn't have come out with a public lecture wallah they would have killed the imam after him what do i mean the governor in Medina, when, he, when Imam al-Sadiq got poisoned, yes? The governor in Medina, you know what he did? The governor in Medina was, uh, uh, Mansur al-Dawaniqi wrote him a letter. He said, go look for the will of Ja'far al-Sadiq. Whoever's name is in the will, kill him. Governor said, whoever's name? He said, whoever's name? They went to the will of Imam al-Sadiq, Wasiyah. Governor opened it. Let's see who's written in the will. I have to kill him. Name number one, Mansur al-Dawaniqi. Name number two, the governor. Name number three, Musa al-Kazim. Name number four, wife of Imam al-Sadr. Imam didn't even write one name. He wrote five because he knew. If I write Musa al-Kazim, they'll kill my son. Let me write the Khalifa's name. And the governor. Governor went back to Khalifa. Khalifa said, huh, did you kill? He said, uh, Mawlana, there's a problem. He said, what is it? He said, you told me to kill the first name on the wasiyah. He said, yes. He said, you're the first one I have to kill. He said, what do you mean? He said, Jafar al-Sadiq is written after me. The Imam will be the Khalifa. And then the governor, Musa al-Kadhim. So what? Do we kill all of them? If we kill all of them, I have to kill myself. And then kill you. And first reason that you find in some of the hadiths that there are certain companions of the imams not knowing who the next imam is. The first reason is what? Taqiyya. Yes? Some didn't openly come out. Sometimes the imams wouldn't reveal to all. Yes? That's the first reason. Second reason, I'll make it clear to you. Someone says after Imam al-Sadiq or after Imam Zain al-Abideen, why is it some Shia don't know who the Imam is after in the hadith? It say, seems confusing, yes? If the first one was so clear and they rejected him, you think they were going to accept the sixth one? <laughs> Ali ibn Abi Talib was not chosen on the day of Ghadir, not in front of a hundred thousand people. There wasn't bakhin bakhin done on him on that day, do you agree? You're telling me no one knew Ali ibn Abi Talib was success of Rasulullah? All of them knew. But sometimes you politically exploit that moment, yes? You know when Ali ibn Abi Talib was announced on the day of Ghadir, you know what they did? Anyone who was Shia of Ali, they went and beheaded. Malik ibn Nuwayra was beheaded by Khalid ibn al-Walid. You know what they write in the books of history? Because Malik didn't pay zakat to Abu Bakr, so we killed him. He didn't pay zakat to Abu Bakr because he knew that the man who was Khalifa was the man of the day of Ghadir. When someone comes and tells me, in the books of Hadith, the 12 Imams aren't clear. I'm like, the first one was the clearest, they didn't accept him. You think they're going to accept the 12th of them? Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, the whole earth knew he was Imam. Everybody knew he was Imam. They left him, number one, number two, number three. At the end, when he was 59, they said, okay. 
Ali ibn Abi Talib, no one knew he was the Imam. There was, was there taqiyya with Ali ibn Abi Talib? No taqiyya. Ghadir, 100,000 people. This is my successor after me. I have made a covenant with you. He is my successor and his sons, yes? As the Imams used to say, the stars are a protection for the inhabitants of the heavens. And we are Muhammad are a protection for the inhabitants of the earth. Yes? Yes, subhanallah. Was there taqiyya with Imam Ali? No. Rasulullah openly made it clear. Yes? He made it clear. Yet subhanallah. They rejected Ali ibn Abi Talib. Someone comes and says in the books of hadith, sometimes the imam, it's confusing who's the next imam, the next imam, the next imam. Why do they keep it a secret? Because when they never kept it a secret, the people rejected. You think you can uh, keep it open later on? Number three, why did some of these sects also emerge? The third reason is, the imams would sometimes tell you, take a hadith from this person, not their beliefs. There are certain people who may have belonged to some of these different sects. By the way, Kaysani, a lot of these sects who believed in the different Mahdi's, many of them are not around anymore, yes? Yes? Kaysaniya, not around. Waqif, are you lucky if you get the odd waqif around the world today? Yes? And you get a lot of these. But some of these people, the Imams, their main leaders, some of these people, the Imams would tell them, take hadiths from him, but don't take your aqidah from him. What began to happen was, people began to mix hadith and aqidah. So when this person gives them beliefs, they take. When he gives them hadiths, they take. And it becomes what? He begins to take this person as his imam and that person as his imam. Or stop at Imam Musa al kadhim or stop at Imam al sadiq or stop at Zain al abidin The imams will make clear, this person for, for beliefs you don't take. But for hadith you A fourth reason why some people were confused with the imams. Some stopped at a certain imam to benefit from the money they gained. Because if they went to the next imam, they'd lose their position with the khums. There were people who loved Imam al kadhim When Imam al rada became Imam, they said, oh, no, no. Imam al kadhim has now gone into Ghaybah. Imam al kadhim died. Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyya died. All these people you're calling Mahdi, 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 they died. Blatantly, they died. No, he went into Ghaybah. He died, he went to Ghaybah. Why? Because they had so much khums under them. If Imam al rada becomes Imam, they lose their khums. They lose the collection. So they said, there's no Imam al rada we stop at Imam al kadhim Today people say, huh, you Shia, I don't even know how many Imams you have. Some of them stopped at Imam al kadhim some stopped. Yeah, they didn't stop because they believed in him. They stopped because the money they had meant they didn't want to move on to the next Imam. And I don't want to talk further about that area because we want to stay out of trouble this Shahar Ramadan, inshallah. So therefore, what do you find? Someone asked the question, in the time of the Imams, was it mentioned that there are 12 Imams with their names? Yes, it is. In books during the time of the Imam, not Al-Kafi. Al-Kafi, I can show you sound sahih hadith from Al-Kafi which mention the names of the Imams one by one. But someone says, listen, Al-Kafi is after the Imams. Okay, during the life of the Imams. Number one, Kitab Sulaim bin Qais al-Hilali has the names of the Imams there. Yes, that they are 12 and the last of them is Al-Qa'im. Yes. That is in Kitab Sulaim. That was written when? First century of Islam. The beginning of second century. Yes. You have secondly, Kitab al-Mahasin of al-Barqi has the names of the Imams. You have Basar al-Darajat. Yes. Of a Safar has the names of the Imams. You have the works of Ghaybah and the work on Al-Qa'im by Ali bin Mahziar and Fadl bin Shadan. These are in the times of the Imams. You have Al-Asl of Al-Asfari. Yes. Who was one of the People used to write the hadiths of Imam al-Sadiq who mentions that Rasulullah said there will be 12 muhaddaths after me. There will be 12 muhaddaths. Angels speak to them. Not wahi, but the angels give them guidance like Maryam used to get guidance from the angels. And the last of them will be al-Qa'im. The 12th of them will be al-Qa'im who will rise and instill justice. All these books I'm giving you are not after the imams. During. If they are after the Imams, someone will say, listen, you made that up afterwards. Yes? You look back and you started to put names to suit your ideology. No. In the time, Bukhari says there will be 12. Muslim says there will be 12. Bukhari and Muslim were written in the time of Imam al-Jawad and Imam al-Hadi. 
أحمد من حنبل مسند إمام الرضا كتاب سليم إمام لسي إمام الباقر من محاسن والبرقي بصائر الدرجات الأصل والأصفر these are all literature in the school of أهل البيت but the clearest hadith that makes it clear that with the Quran the imams will remain forever is I leave behind for you the Quran and my أهل البيت yes Rasulullah made it clear that you want to hold on to guidance until the pool of Kothar hold on to the Quran and hold on to the Ahl al-Bayt the two of them will never ever separate but Ya Rasulullah Imam al-Askari died that means your hadith is wrong and Rasulullah's hadith is not wrong you're the one who got it wrong yes Imam al-Askari died that means there has to be a hujjah always with the Quran yes a hujjah has to always be alive with the Quran. Someone says, but are you sure it's the Mahdi? <coughs> yes. Are you sure? I asked them one question which I'll continue tomorrow. If it wasn't the Mahdi that we believe in, why is it that the Abbasid Khulafa were standing outside his father's house in Samarra? Unless the Abbasid Khulafa knew there was a group of people at the time called the Rawafid, Rafidah, as Al Qasim ibn Ibrahim al Rasi says, Imam al Hadi is the tenth of the Rafidah. The Abbasids knew that we had twelve, they knew the names of them, so they kept our eleventh under house arrest in Samarra to see when the baby is born. Why would you keep Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askari in Samarra if there's no sign of a child to be born? Unless in the books you knew the names of each and now there's only one more. So you made them live in Samarra. Why would you keep them in Samarra? Because you already knew 11 were living. Now is the time for the 12. Yes? Samarra is the biggest proof for the 12th Imam. Because the Abbasid government wouldn't put his dad under house arrest unless they knew there's a child to be born. Unless they knew in the books that there would be a child from the descendants of Fatima who would be born. And that's why did the Imams say that the Mahdi is from us? Yes, they did, clearly. The Imams would make clear and none more so. Imam Zain al-Abdin in the court of Yazid in Sham. Imam, when he gave his khutbah in Sham, he said, Allah granted us six and has given us excellence in seven. Allah granted us knowledge and patience and eloquence and generosity and forbearance and the believers love for us. And he granted us excellence in seven. Yes. What are the seven? From us is Rasul Allah. And from us is Fatima al-Zahra. From us is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yes? From us is who? Hamza. From us is Hassan. From us is Hussein. And from us is the Mahdi. Yes? In front of Yazid. That just in case later on someone comes and says, even the Imams didn't know who would be the Mahdi. No. Imam Zayn said, no Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya. Yes? Nor is it anyone else who you're going to put. No, from us will be the Mahdi. Yes? You see Hassan, Hussein, Ali, Fatima. From that line, the line of Hussein will be the Mahdi. And that's why you find without a doubt from that line, that line that gave everything to the religion of Islam. The line who are the princes from the line of Ismail. Yes? The line of Ismail, Allah promised in the Bible, Genesis 17, 17, we will make your nation a great nation. There will be 12 princes from your nation. Ismail, all the way down, Abdul Muttalib, he has who? Abu Talib and Abdullah. Abdullah has Muhammad and Abu Talib has Ali and Muhammad has Fatima and Fatima marries Ali and from here there are 12 princes from Ismail. Yes? That line was the purest line. It's the line Allah promised leadership in. 
And it's the line Allah knew would give the most to the religion of Islam, the line of Ismail. Where did it all begin? With Rasul Allah and with Khadija. Yes? If anyone ever set the legacy of the children of Ismail, it was Bibi Khadija alayhi salam. No doubt. No doubt. That lady who Rasul Allah said, if it wasn't for the sword of Ali and the wealth of Khadija, there would be no Islam. She gave everything away to the religion of Islam. Yes? Nobody gave like Khadija gave. And that's why when Rasulullah gave Fadak to Bibi Fatima, when he gave Fadak, Allah said to him, Give Fadak to Fatima. It is recompense for what her mother gave to Islam. Yes? Sayyida Khadija, mazloom in her life, oppressed after her death today when you go to mecca you see her grave all they've put is a stone on top that's it and there are people standing there saying what are you doing here go go that lady who gave everything to islam this is the way she's treated yes and that's the saddest thing about the history of ahl al-bayt fatima al-zahra we don't know where her grave is Ali ibn Abi Talib, we waited 90 years before we knew where his grave was because the Khawarij wanted to take his body out and burn. Imam al Hassan, they put arrows on his janazah. Yes? Al Muhammad, each one of them, you find dunya oppressed them even after their death. But Khadija, from the very beginning, her masaib was the first masaib in Islam. Do you know why? They had been three years poverty stricken in the Sha'ib of Abu Talib. They put economic sanctions on them. Three years children were feeding off small amounts of food. Khadija would say to the children, you eat the food, I'll eat the grass. Tell me which wife, which wife was there in the valley of Abu Talib for three years? At the beginning, it was her wealth that helped them when everyone in Mecca boycotted them economically. Khadija's wealth helped them. Until at the end, in her last moments, she doesn't have anything to eat. Rasulullah in that year lost Abu Talib and Khadija. Am al Huzn, the year of grief. I've lost my backbones. But do you know what hurt Rasulullah when Bibi Khadija died? Normally when someone passes away, what do you do? You bring a kafan to cover their whole body, yes? They were so poor that even the kafan Rasulullah had was too short to cover Khadija. Khadija, who gave everything to Islam, doesn't have a kafan when she dies. And me and you have kafans? Wallah, it is haram. Haram! What this dunya does. Rasulullah, the tears began to flow from his eyes when he noticed the kafan wasn't long enough. Why? Everyone, when they die, they deserve a kafan. Do you agree? No one should die on this earth without a kafan on their body. And I think all of you know where I'm heading. Yes? Everyone, when they die, they deserve a kafan on their body. Rasulullah noticed as he was putting the kafan on Khadija. He puts it on one side, the legs are showing. He puts it on the other side, the legs are showing. Wasn't long enough. <laughs> so he prayed, Ya Allah, I am your prophet and this is Khadija. She gave all her wealth to Islam. I can't even give her a kafan. Take your heart to Mecca. At that moment, Jibrail came. Yes, because Jibra'il cries for Al-Muhammad. He came, he said, Ya Rasulullah, here are five kafans for you. <laughs> those of you who know, they know where I am going. But those of you who know, know where I am heading. Rasulullah looked at him and he said to him, Jibra'il, who are these five kafans for? <laughs> Basic question. He said to him, Ya Rasulullah, the first kafan is for Khadija, so you can bury her. 
He said to him at that moment, Jibrail, tell me who is the second kafan for? Allah. He said to him, Ya Rasul, Allah, the second kafan is for you. That when you die, there is a kafan to cover your body. He looked at him and he said to him, Jibrail, who is the third kafan for? He said to him, Ya Rasul Allah, the third kafan is for Fatima al-Zahra. Yes. When that rib is broken, there is a kafan on the body. He said to him, Jibrail, tell me who is the fourth kafan for? He said to him, Ya Rasul Allah, the fourth kafan is for Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yes. He looked at him and he said to him, Jibrail, tell me who is the fifth kafan for? He said to him, Ya Rasul Allah, the fifth kafan is for Hassan bin Ali. Yes, that when he dies, there is a kafan to cover his body. At this moment, the tears begun to flow from the eyes of Rasul Allah. Ya Rasulullah, why do the tears flow? He said to him, Jibrail, where is the covenant for Abba Abdullah? Allahu Akbar. Yes. Take your heart to Karbala. Yes. Jibrail, where is the covenant for Abba Abdullah? He said to him, Ya Rasulullah, Abba Abdullah will die without a kafir on his body. Why? Because the horses will trample all over his body. When Abba Abdullah came out that final time, yes, Zainab called out, Mahlad, Mahlad, Ya Abdul Zahra. Wait, wait, O oh son of Zahra, wait. When he came back, he said, Zainab, what is it? She said, said to him, she turned to Medina, yes, she said, Mother Fatima, I'm giving the amana, yes, she said, Abba Abdullah, when my mother was dying, she said, kiss the neck of Hussein and kiss the chest, and give Abba Abdullah the shirt so he covers his body, she kissed the neck, why, because that neck would have shiver sitting on it. Yes, she kissed the chest. Why? Because that chest will have the hooves of Bani Umayyah trampling all over the shirt of Imam Al Hussein. I say to Zahra, they broke one of your ribs, they took all the ribs of Abba Abdullah. <laughs>